Hello again. Um, let's continue uh, with the first lady lecture of the day. Uh, and may I add how I'm always happy to see more women in tech. Anita Schmidt is a data scientist at Migros, Switzerland's largest retailer, where she works on various projects advancing the retail customer's experience using data. She will demonstrate on a real case if humanoid robots in retail are just a fad or a trend. She will also touch on the intersection of data science and robotics and what are the key skills needed in this realm. Anita, we're very excited uh, to see what you guys did in Switzerland and to hear more about your experience with humanoid robots. Thank you very much. So, hello. Uh, thank you for a nice introduction. Uh, so, I'm going to speak about humanoid robots in retail. Let me first tell you a little bit about Migro, where I work. Um, so, as he already mentioned, Migro is Switzerland's largest retailer. Uh, and Migro is a special kind of company because it's actually a, a consumer cooperative. So it belongs to the people. About 2 million mostly Swiss people own the company. Um, and it was founded by a guy uh, who's very highly respected in Switzerland to this day. His name was Gottlieb Duttweiler. And in 1925, he was the first who had this idea to um, take a truck, fill it with food and go out to the people and sell it. Um, at a very reasonable price. So basically, this was kind of the, the on-demand service that we see nowadays, um, but before there was an internet or apps or anything of this kind. So you can say uh, Migro um, was founded by a guy who's very innovative, who was very innovative and, um, and uh, ahead of his time. Um, he also used trucks by Ford, which at the time were uh, a new technology, but already kind of becoming mainstream and he jumped right on it and used the technology uh, for his business idea. Uh, Migro, so you know, it also owns about 30 industrial companies. So for example, we produce our own chocolate. Chocolate is very uh, important in Switzerland. Um, so he made sure that, that we produce our own chocolate so we can sell it to the consumers at a very reasonable price. Um, in addition, um, Migro owns uh, uh, various commercial travel and logistics enterprises. Uh, part of that is also a shopping mall. So Migro owns a shopping mall. It's called Glot. Um, and it's actually a fun name because Glot, it's a, a river that flows through the area. That's why it's called Glot. But it also means fun and nice um, in Swiss German. So it's a very good name for a shopping mall. Uh, the shopping mall was um, opened in the 60s and again it was very uh, ahead of its time at the time only people in the us did this so again very innovative um, so when i joined migro um, and i only joined migro in april this year so i'm new at this place um, and i learned that there is a data scientist in the team that i'm in now um, who works with human humanoid robots um, I had two thoughts. The uh, first one is here, uh, you know, is really, <laughs> does anybody want this? Um, do the consumers even like this? Um, so is this really a trend or is it just gonna be, okay, we're gonna play around with it for a little while and then it's just, you know, it's gonna go away. And the second question was, well, what the heck does it have to do with data science? <laughs> because we are a data science team. So, um, um, in the first part, I'm going to um, explain my view on how robotics fits in with AI and uh, therefore also data science. Um, and then I'm going to show you what, what's happening right now at Migro with the robots and what the future looks like. Uh, thirdly, I want to tell you the whole story about how this actually came along at Migro. Pepper is the name of the robot that we use, so it's the Pepper story. And fourthly, some lessons learned um, in case you want to try this. <laughs> so on to the first part. So uh, my perception is that a lot of people, um, not specialists like you guys, but other people, uh, general public, they think robots and AI is the same thing. Um, I guess it, it's because both have to do with machines and the machines mimic human behavior and, um, and is performing tasks that, that so far a human has been doing. Um, however, um, According to Wikipedia, the word robot was first applied as a term for artificial automata in 1920 by a Czech writer. I find this very interesting. Um, and artificial, in, and, and he said in the play, or that's a quote from Wikipedia, 
the fictional story postulated the techno technological creation of artificial human bodies without souls. So it was just about the body and not about the soul. On the other hand, artificial intelligence is intelligence demonstrated by machines, right? So I think it's safe to say that robotics is not the same thing as AI. Um, however, um, nowadays, a lot of robots contain AI modules. Um, uh, the picture here that I'm showing, I stole from, from this webpage. It's a, it's a company called Engineering Arts. Uh, it also builds other humanoid robots. And they said something compelling in a YouTube video I saw, and they basically said, well, most AI does not need a body. Most AI functions well without a body. And in particular, I would extend that and say most AI does not need a humanoid body. We only need the humanoid body if we want to interact with machine in the way that we interact with humans, right? So that's uh, how I see it, the realm. So let's now look at what, happened at, uh, what is happening at Migro right now. Um, so in this shopping center, Glot, we have six humanoid robots of the type Pepper. Um, Pepper is a humanoid robot by SoftBank, a Japanese company that probably a lot of you know. Um, these six robots are mainly used for entertainment. So we do special shows, uh, sometimes at the, at the shopping center, or often actually every Saturday at the shopping center, but also in other places like here, it's at the Zurich main station. And as you can see, Pepper is a special robot because it's only as, as tall as a child, which makes it actually um, easier for, to engage people because children love um, interacting with a robot. Um, and it's not scary because it's not too tall or anything. It also speaks like a child. You will see a video later. So that's what we use it for mainly. Um, and this, uh, the, this generates a lot of media attention, or last year it generated a lot of media attention. That was the goal of it. Uh, and the response in the media has been overwhelming, uh, as we also are a market leader in this space, especially in Switzerland. Nobody else has done this. So several Swiss newspapers published articles about it here and here. And also, it actually, um, Pepper hosted uh, the biggest Swiss uh, news show one time, which was a lot of fun and a lot of work. Um, and now what's happening is basically, so Pepper has an iPad installed on its chest, and this is the interface on, on, on this iPad right now. So when you go to the shopping mall, you can uh, approach the robot and either by touching or by speaking, which of course is the nicer way to do it, um, you basically can ask for um, orientation. So you can ask where is the store, and the robot will explain in plain German <laughs> how to get to the store and in addition show you the map. So it's, it's much nicer than going to a touch screen uh, and trying to find your way. Uh, so that's the main functionality that we built. Um, and then in addition, um, SoftBank ships the robot already with, with games that you can play. And also you can take selfies and again, you can, you, you know, it's already installed that you can click on it and do a selfie, but you can also tell it, Pepper, uh, I want to take a selfie. And then you can choose which, um, which pose you want. And so this is actually a feature that is, that is very popular with teenagers. They like to go to the mall and, and take selfies with Pepper. Um, so a huge success. And then in addition, we have this feature, well, if you need anything else, and there's, of course, an old school info desk with people sitting there. Instead of having to go to the info desk, you can just um, call, you can tell Pepper to call the info desk for you. And then um, Pepper will set up a call, introduce you, you and you can just speak to the person um, through, through Pepper. So in, in the future, one could think of replacing the touch screen maps that are usually in, in um, shopping malls with a bunch of these robots. Uh, it's not that much more expensive, actually, and it's much more fun to interact with. Um, also in the future, one scenario that we're thinking of is using Pepper as a sales assistant. In particular, as I said, we own uh, travel agencies, uh, electronic shops, um, and we could basically use a recommender that we built, the data science team built, 
expose it with an API, and then um, you could go to the robot and either enter your loyalty card number, or um, you could answer a bunch of questions, and we could actually give you uh, a recommendation right there. Um, that's based on, on data, and, and not just what the particular sales agent happens to know. Um, so that would be a really cool new thing. So um, now let me tell you how this actually started, because again, I was a bit surprised that Migro even does that. So it all actually started with this guy who's the head of, let me say it right, the head of shopping mall. Um, and he just had this idea um, to, he, he saw a humanoid robot somewhere and he said, I want to have this, um, this is so much fun. Um, and he already had this plan that it's going to attract a lot of new customers. Um, so he contacted our data science team, and uh, there's a data scientist in my team um, or working with me now, that's Oyan, and, and he heard about this, and he had no idea about robots or anything like that, but he just thought this is a really cool thing to do, so he jumped right on it. So they bought the first two peppers and assembled the team, and um, he explained to me, to make this work, you need a really big team, um, and in particular, what you need is something like mall operations or infrastructure because you need to have a safe space for these uh, uh, robots, right? You can't just let them roam around. They're, they're pretty sensitive. Um, um, so you need, you need all like the infrastructure, the logistics, you need Wi-Fi, you need IT. Um, you also need to think about where are you going to store it at night, how, where are you going to recharge it, and um, have some security features because somebody might steal this thing and it's... it's you know, it's not super expensive, but it's also not, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of work in it. So um, they actually built a geofencing system. So if you try to remove a robot, it will go off, an alarm will go off. And other security features, like uh, if you touch it, if, if you stand in the way or it might be a, a child, make sure that the child doesn't get hurt. Um, so, and another part of the team was the marketing team. So, um, the marketing team from, from the shopping mall, they actually came up with a story to frame it because a lot of people are scared of robots, right? They're scared of AI and they're particularly scared of robots, um, both the customers as well as the employees. So, the employees were a little bit um, um, irritated in the beginning when uh, the robots started showing up, right? So, uh, because they're going to steal the jobs. So they framed it as a child who's, who, who still has to learn a lot. So basically the employees and the customers can teach um, the robot, which goes well uh, together with the physique of this, of this robot. It looks like a child. Uh, it's not scary. And, um, and also, as you, well, you won't see it in the video, but as I can tell you, it's not as advanced as, as most people think it is, right? And so it's actually, it can only understand uh, a certain set of, of uh, sentences. Um, it cannot just really understand everything and say everything. Um, so it's not that intelligent. Um, yeah, so these, these, um, so these people from, from marketing, they were also promoters, so they would actually stand there with the robot and promote it. So this is Boyan, the guy I told you about. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it himself today, otherwise he would be the right person to give this talk. But um, he's also a surfer on the side, so he's at the Swiss Surfing, or he's training for the Swiss Surfing Championship. Um, but yeah, he's, he's basically the person who jumped on this product, project. Uh, as I said, he had no idea, uh, or not much idea about robotics in particular, but thought it was really interesting. So uh, I asked him, you know, in case anybody of, of you wants to go in this area, what do you have, what skills do you have to have to go into robotics? And he explained to me, so one important thing is uh, the robot-specific operating system. So it's a Unix system in the robot and Android on the tablet. However, it's not off the shelf. So you really have to learn the specifics of these operating systems and you have to do a lot of hacking. Um, and then the AI parts, usually you use APIs. So he tried the Google API and the Microsoft a API for um, speech recognition. And um, so, so that's a lot of, a lot of his work went into that. And also just integrate external open source software if there's anything that, that is not functioning or is already pre-programmed in the robot. Um, he also brokered the collaboration with an external company for the coding and the development. Um, I will tell you about that, that a little bit more later, um, but let's, 
watch a video so you can see how they dress. In German, I'll just translate. Not that much text. Can you swim? Can you swim? I'm sorry, I can't swim. Hello, welcome at Blast. Hello, welcome at Blast. It's 12 p.m. So it says here, Blast has six robots. It can high five. It says, robots should love humans. And you can hug it. Again, you can do selfies. I like it when you tickle my head. Yeah. So, Okay, so just so you get a little bit of an impression um, and uh, unfortunately I couldn't find a newer video but now actually um, it, it, it has much more functionality than you saw here. Um, um, Boyan also put in some time and they actually did a, a, a choreography with all the six, six pepper robots dancing at the same time. Uh, you can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. Um, a lot of fun. So. Uh, what are the lessons learned in case you want to go into this area or you have a company that's interested in, in, in launching a humanoid robot? First of all, you need to create a collaboration. Um, uh, probably you won't have all these skills and, and functionalities in, in your company. So in our case, it was Glot, which is the, uh, the shopping center. And again, they already had an infrastructure team. They had a marketing team. They also had IT for Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And then Migro, we provided the data science skills. Um, and then uh, also Boyan brokered um, a collaboration with this startup in Switzerland, which is called Roundcode. Um, it's a local company that specializes in robotics, data management, and systems engineering. And that was really, really important because they really understand on a deep level how these robots work and, and how to customize it. So, so it, it's, it's as smooth as possible. Um, what are the technical challenges? Well, in particular with Pepper, I don't know any other robots, but it might be similar, is um, the integrated software is pretty limited and sometimes not that well documented. That's understandable because there aren't that many people using it. It's not like Android, everybody uses it, so you're going to document it in detail or there's forums online. Um, instead, it's a pretty small community, so you have to do much more uh, custom development. Um, it also, Pepper doesn't handle crowds well. It's actually built for one-to-one -one interaction because it will use machine vision to identify a person and then it will track that person. And so in the shopping mall and situations where you have a big crowd, it can get quite tricky. Um, it takes a while to get Pepper to, to basically uh, be able to, to focus on the right person. So there's some, there was some custom work around that and it's still an issue. Uh, so you basically, as a promoter, you have to make sure it's always one person trying to interact with Pepper. It also has some issues handling women's and children's voices. We don't know whether that is because of the built-in um, speech-to-text um, in the robot or whether it's the APIs we're using, but that's a challenge. Um, another challenge is that the user interaction is very different from traditional systems, right? Um, it's not like an app. So you really have to think through the user interaction, um, how you're actually, you know, got to guide the customer um, interacting. And thirdly, um, it's still a big challenge to make the, the human machine interaction smoother. Um, right now, for example, with the hug, you just tell it, I want to I wanna give a hug and it will just go there and make this movement. Whether you're there or not, it doesn't care. It just triggers the process, right? And so it would be nicer if it was more interactive and more real time. Um, yeah, and so what are the key success factors? Um, from our experience, we would say, first of all, again, it's the marketing and media coverage, if that's your main goal. Yeah, the right framing of the robots that people aren't scared of it. 
um, also deal with the employees who have this fear of robots replacing them. So that means the robots have to be perceived as friendly, funny, helpful, cute. Uh, Pepper is very good for that. Uh, secondly, it's expectation management, both internally and externally. Most people, even myself, before I started working on this, I overestimated what the robot can do. Um, and so you really have to make sure that, that people are not totally um, disappointed when they realize it can only answer 10 questions. <laughs> and lastly, um, yeah, one needs a close calibration um, across departments and companies. So again, infrastructure, marketing, etc. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, so the first question is, are the, ro uh, are the robots collecting data on the runtime for learning? Uh, no, right now, no. Uh, second question, does the robot collect all the conversation people have with it? Um, it doesn't collect, it collects it, sends it to the API, uh, gets the answer back, and then it's deleted. So uh, why are there only six robots? What is stopping them <laughs> from using it in more places? Uh, I, I would say six is already a, a large number. <laughs> um, basically, that six is enough for this shopping mall, right? I mean, basically, you want to have maybe one on each floor. That's enough. Um, have there been any controversial situations with Pepper? Controversial? I wouldn't say controversial in that sense. Um, there were situations where uh, inadvertently, basically, the robot hit a child, but not it didn't hit it. I mean, it wasn't bad, but, but yeah, like situations like this, where, again, you have to have promoters at all time. It has a security feature that if you pull it, it will just stop moving. Um, and then just, um, just controversial questions, like, again, what happens with the data? Um, kind of, is this a scary thing or not? Um, what does a da data scientist contribute here? So is the data scientist more of an AI developer in this case or, or something else? Yeah, again, I, I would say the data scientist doesn't, doesn't even have to be a data scientist, but basically what you need here, I mean, data scientists, most of us, we think, you know, we're good at hacking too. So the hacking part you need from data science, uh, you also need to understand AI because you need to use these APIs. And for example, understand that uh, if, the, if the robot doesn't understand children, that maybe some, there's some bias in the data or there's something wrong with the model. So you kind of have to understand the AI behind it. And the final question. So what is the final conclusion? Is it a friend or a foe? <laughs> I would say it's something in between. I mean, I think it was quite a success, so I, I don't believe it's going to go away. Um, however, whether this really will penetrate the whole market and, and every shopping mall will use this particular uh, type of humanoid robot is questionable. So what do you think, maybe, do you have an estimate uh, when will robots be more used in, in retail chains around the globe? In, I mean, I think it's, it's coming right now, and then we'll see how long, how, you know, whether this is, is going to be a lasting thing or not. And we just received another question. So uh, what is a contribution of a revenue increase? We weren't really able so far to measure it. But of course, uh, the, main, the main goal uh, is to attract more customers, therefore make more money. And maybe establish a brand as an innovative. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, PR. Well, thank you very much uh, for the great lecture um, and thank you for all the great questions. Um, uh, I would like to hand you this uh, certificate for the contribution to the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much.